In this video, I'm going to show you how to detect a floating neutral in 240 volt circuits using a traditional voltmeter, a low Z meter, and a non contact voltage pen. A common residential electric dryer here that does not power up. In this particular case, the reason this dryer is not starting is indeed due to a voltage problem but a specific type of voltage problem called a floating neutral. If you check the outlet, with a regular multimeter, it tests fine. I'm getting 247 volts from leg to leg, and I'm getting 120 volts from leg to neutral there and 120 volts from neutral to this leg using a traditional voltmeter. So that would imply that there's nothing wrong with this receptacle. The problem is that traditional voltmeters don't put enough of a load on a voltage source, a compromised voltage source, to be able to detect that it is compromised. So if you went and checked this with your traditional multimeter, you might think that this voltage source is fine. Dismiss it and go in and try to replace the control board or something like that in the dryer and it would just send you on the wrong path. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly test this voltage source and be able to determine that it is in fact compromised. First things first, this video is intended for professionals that have a need to test voltage supplies. I do recommend that you hire a professional for this type of a thing. Always wear rubber gloves when performing such tests and wear safety glasses. So first I'm going to show you how to do this without a low Z meter. If you don't have a low Z meter, you still, I recommend you have a low Z meter to do this, but if you don't, you can still put under load. If you don't have a low Z meter, you didn't need to unplug this all the way. Right, you want to pull it out just far enough to expose the blades there, and then you can test the blades for voltage. So you're putting it under load, and then the blades of the cord will bring the voltage, will bring or the conductors that will bring the voltage out basically for you to be able to test it. I'm using insulated lead tips here, and what this does is this reduces the chance. That you're going to cross something, you're going to touch something, or you're going to cross one of the legs to uh, neutral. This keeps you from doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test from leg to leg. We should get around 240 volts, plus 10 or minus 5. This test works fine with uh, three wire and four wire receptacles. It does not involve ground. And the reason it doesn't involve ground is because ground is rarely used. And you have no idea what the integrity of ground is. So what we can do is we can test the integrity of L1 and L2. Once we determine the integrity of that, we can use those as a reference to test neutral. If L1 and L2, if the integrity of L1 and L2 is not there, then we have either a bad L1 or a bad L2, and we can go on from there. So I'm going to go ahead and test L1 to L2. We should get approximately 240 volts from leg to leg. 247. Okay. Under load, we're getting 247 from leg to leg. That tells us that L1 and L2 are good. Now, I'm going to test one of the legs to neutral. I suspect that we have a bad neutral here. And what's going to happen is neutral will rise because of the impedance, the resistance inside the dryer. If neutral is floating, it's going to pull neutral up to the level of either L1 or L2. And most likely going to be L1 because that is uh, the leg that uses, that is that the power, the control panel is powered from. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the neutral here. One side to neutral and then the other side to this leg here. And I've got 3.7 volts. So what does that tell us? That tells us that neutral is only 3.7 volts away from L1, which means it's being pulled all the way up to L1 practically. 
So that means that neutral is sitting at whatever 120 volts minus 3.7. So it's sitting at about 116 volts. And the neutral should always be zero volts with respect to ground. So this tells us we have a bad neutral here. Now this is how you would test it if you have a low Z meter. Backlight on, maybe it'll be a little more legible. Okay, so this is the low Z meter. Okay, this puts about a 3000 ohm impedance across the test leads here. Hold that so you can read it. All right, so I'm gonna test from leg to leg and we're getting 247 volts. So that tells us right there that leg to leg is good because we just put a load on it and we read 247 volts, All right? Well, let's test from leg to neutral. We should be getting about 120 volts here. We're getting seven volts, seven volts. So that means the low Z meter is pulling this all the way up to, all the way up to within seven volts of L1. Let's try it with respect to L2. We're getting seven volts also. So it's pulling neutral up to within seven volts of L2, which means that this is pulling, either one of these legs is pulling neutral up to about 113 volts. Neutral should not do that. So this clearly tells us we have a bad neutral right here. You can do this with a four wire or a three wire cord doesn't matter because we're not involving ground in this test here. So we have a compromised voltage source here. The dryer is not starting and I've already determined that this, there's a problem with this voltage source, this receptacle. I want to show you how you can use a voltage pen to detect a floating neutral. So this is your one leg. This is your one other leg over here. You can see it flashes here. Now neutral should be at ground potential and you should not get any voltage signaling at neutral. Neutral is on the bottom over here and it should not signal on neutral. If it's signaling on neutral, that means that the internal resistance or internal impedance of the dryer is pulling neutral up to the potential of one of these legs here. Okay, that is neutral. Neutral should not do that. Neutral should, shouldn't signal at all. It should be a ground potential. So this is one way that you can tell if you have a floating neutral. It's not always definitive because sometimes a floating neutral doesn't pull up that high, but in the vast majority of cases, a floating neutral is gonna pull up almost up to the potential of L1 or L2. So that neutral is signaling, so that tells us we have a floating neutral. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.